do 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 hey everybody uh i'm live hopefully hopefully i'm live uh this is mike from the fantasy footballers joining you from my incredible studio my incredible home studio uh nba jam over here and look al borland has said that he can see me he can hear me everything looks good which is fantastic because it's just me and i hope i don't screw everything up which so far so good ah here we go and the chat is starting to populate michael hoff what up sean mcquillan oh my goodness oh here we go what's up everybody Welcome to Mike's personal live stream uh, working title. I should probably come up with something better than that. But I wanted to hop on for a little bit, you know, say what up, first of all. Uh, and, you know, we're getting hyped. Football is coming up. Wanted to share with you. This is an exclusive code during the live stream but because I want to, you know, we got to talk about the ultimate draft kit. And we got a special code for you going on right now. You can get 10% off with the code warlock <laughs> because if you listen to our podcast we are buffoons we are dumb and somehow deshaun watson turned into deshaun warlock at some point in this week i'm not even really sure where or why or how it happened but here's where we are so if you have been slacking look shame on you but you can correct your mistake right now and get 10 percent off if you use the code warlock ultimate but of course, I'm not just here to talk about that stuff. I'm not just talking UDK. I want to say what's up to the good people, the the Foot Clan out there. I want to answer some questions. <laughs> Chris Verba says, "Is this live? This is about as live as it gets, my man. For when you're used to a podcast, what's going on, everybody? Lindsay just finished a Foot Clan league draft. Lindsay, a longtime supporter of the Foot Clan, what's going on? I'm sure you dominated your drafts." Let's see. I'm trying to scroll through. People just pumped to jump in and say, what's up? So, hey, how you doing? This is kind of weird when you're just in your room and you're talking to a camera. You know that people are watching, but it's, it's, it's a little bit weird. I'm not going to lie to you right now. This is a little bit weird. Uh, all right. We finally <laughs> I found a couple questions here. Austin on YouTube wants to know Rager or Justin Jefferson. So today was actually very fun. If you were on Twitter, you know that sometimes Twitter is not very fun. Sometimes it's fun. This was a good day. It was a good day to be on Twitter. There's a lot of stuff coming in from training camps around the league. And it's, it, it, it's, you know, Andy, Andy just distracted me with a message. Sorry. Uh, but you know, we're not getting all the, the training camp goodness that we're used to getting, but the stuff is starting to come out. The hype pieces are starting to come out. Blake Jarwin, Chris Herndon. Oh, oh oof, oof. You, you know why it was a good day for me when I was logging on to Twitter today. But anyways, so uh, I was reminded of, because I was talking rookie wide receivers, Jerry Judy is getting hype. He's getting the the highlight pieces all throughout Twitter right now. But but he was not in this question. He is not in this question. Uh, we're talking Justin Jefferson. We are talking Jalen Rager. Look, I like both these players a lot. But Jalen Rager is the one who has the opportunity. Look, he apparently has to beat out Greg Ward. That's what Rager has to do over the course of training camp to <laughs> establish a starting spot in the lineup. I'm going to bet on the first round pick, Rager. Look, Justin Jefferson, he'll probably start as well, but he just that that opportunity, the, the passing opportunity of the Minnesota Vikings, it's not what you're going to get from the Philadelphia Eagles. At least the game plan. That's not what uh, that's not what's going on now. They're talking about my beard on <laughs> on the company Slack. You would be correct, fellas. The beard did get a little bit of the trim ski. Uh, you know, look, Arizona is not an okay place right now. When you go outside. You are. I, I've never felt air like I had today. It was muggy. It is hot. It is terrible. I don't know why we live here. Mostly because of Andy. Uh, so we got to get out of here. Anyways, uh, let's go. Let's go to this next question here. Oh, talk of Jarwin. 
yeah. Let's yeah. Look, I talk up Jarwin all the time. Someone asked, "Am I tired?" Look, that's my secret. I'm always tired. Me and the Hulk. <laughs> that's that's not a good joke. All right, here we go. Oh, Lauren's here. What's up, Lauren? Saying hi in the chat. Just let me know that she is here. Okay, let me find a question. Operating this chat is a little bit difficult. Ooh, Patrick Moore. Uh, also, is Andy the worst at fantasy? Yes. He stinks. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Next question. What to do with the Washington backfield? Look, I knew I was going to come up. I was going to see how long I could possibly avoid talking about Washington's running backs. But here we go. And t- uh, <laughs> I <laughs> I was oh man, I forgot I could put the questions up. Thank you, Al Borland. Look, I'm I'm rusty right now. I'm rusty. So I'll get the next question up. Okay. Adrian Peterson is the starting running back right now for Washington. He's probably the starting running back for the first few games, maybe even the entire season. Then you just have to start, you know, following the money, so to speak. We t- we say that all the time. Follow the actions of the coaching staff and the management. The actions of this management for Washington said Antonio Gibson is a priority. They took him, I think, the second pick in the third round, so high overall priority. Their second pick overall because they didn't have a second-round pick from uh, an earlier trade. They needed Antonio Gibson. I get it. He's carried the ball 33 times or whatever at Memphis. I totally understand that. He did carry the ball at JUCO. Uh, and his junior, his first year at Memphis, look, he was behind Tony Pollard. He was behind, uh, Daryl Henderson and Tony Pollard's doing, he's doing all right with very limited work in college, more than Gibson, more than Gibson, but still not a ton. Antonio Gibson dominated on kickoffs. We we've seen time after time, high correlation between players that succeed in kickoffs and players that are just good on the NFL. They have natural ability. He led Uh, His junior college in receiving, he dominated in the receiving game at Memphis. I love the player. I love the ability. We have to watch training camp and figure out what's going to happen. To me, it's Adrian Peterson and maybe Bryce Love. It sounds like they really do like Bryce Love. But what what does Bryce Love have going? I mean, he had the the dominant junior year, but, but really fell off his final year of college. Seems like an incredibly smart dude. Seems like a really... He's, he, Bryce Love seems like a dude you want to hang out with when I've checked in on him and seeing his interviews, you know, seeing where he's at. I, I guess he wants to be a doctor, which is pretty freaking cool after the NFL. But right now, look, even with the ADP rising, I'm still going to be betting on Antonio Gibson and realizing that it might it might take some time. He could be out there right away making things happen, but it's going to take some time. All right, Kyle. Oh, thank you, Kyle, from YouTube. How do I enter the 10% off code? That's a great question. I don't know. There's, look, there's, look, when you ultimatedraftkit.com, you go through the process. Somewhere there's a coupon code in there. Come on, like we've all done that. We've all done the coupon codes when we're, when we're buying online. And this one's Warlock because, of course, Deshaun Warlock. All right. <laughs> uh, some inappropriate comments that I will filter through. All right, Eric. All right, look, I got a question up on the board. We're improving. Eric wants to know what is Calvin Ridley's ceiling this year, in my opinion. His ceiling to me is is a top 10 wide receiver. We do see that on a yearly basis. Uh, now, when you're on a live stream, you're often, you know, you just you're flowing, you're going, you're showing, you're riffing, you're pulling the stats out the back of your head. I don't know the exact number, but it's like one and a half to two and a half teams or something every single year that we see multiple wide receiver ones from because a there's there's always a team that catches fire and because we need the team to catch fire. So then I can talk about how they're gonna regress the next year. Big fun. But there's always we see it time after time, uh, two wide receivers from the same team end up in the top twelve, and which oh sorry Al Borland is interrupting me. 
Oh yeah, there's look, there's a coupon code in there somewhere, Alex. When you're in the top right, the top right when you're making your account. And look, thank you, thank you for supporting the show. Really appreciate it. So Calvin Ridley, look, Julio Jones is a lock. He's not going anywhere. He hasn't slipped. He's older. Doesn't matter. He's wiser. Look, Julio Jones is a monster. He's he's locked. He's top five guy. But Calvin Ridley can succeed. Matt Ryan has enough passing yards to go around. Can we get those touchdowns up? Get those interceptions down just a little bit. I was trying to, I think we were on Sirius XM, the footballers, and I was talking about the difference of Matt Ryan finishing where he did this year, which was a bit disappointing for fantasy, and him being, you know, that top eight guy again. You just take the interceptions and the touchdowns, you just click. You just you just need to click them one one side each direction, and then all of a sudden Matt Ryan is excellent again because he always puts up yardage. Calvin Ridley is going to benefit the most. Hayden Hurst is he's interesting. Uh, I get it. I'm not like really really in on Hayden Hurst. We've seen him come through in his limited opportunity, pretty limited opportunity from Baltimore, but draft capital, first round pick. Atlanta paid up to get him. They're really hoping that he comes through. But I'm not going to I'm not just bequeathing that Austin Hooper tight end production right to Hayden Hurst. And if anyone's going to benefit from the lack of Austin Hooper being there, it's Calvin Ridley. And most of is not there as well. So to me ceiling is legitimately a top 10 wide receiver. And if you, uh, if for Alex, like Alex, you just grab the ultimate draft kit, dude, jump in, check out reception perception. It's exclusive in the ultimate draft kit. Make sure you use that code war warlock. Uh, and it's for Matt Harmon. And he goes and he looks at wide receivers and he charts them. How does a wide receiver perform agnostic of the quarterback? That's why we bring up the reception perception so frequently. It's how well can a wide receiver do in an optimal situation or you just you know just grading the wide receiver because it's often it's hard we need production from a wide receiver to grade them but there's wide receivers who are getting it done on the field but their quarterback is not getting it done calvin ridley scores very very high he always has uh shoot off the top of my head Harmon said it's uh i think it's calvin ridley and uh curtis samuel are the two wide receivers who have hit a certain threshold, a certain percentile score in success rate. They're the only two that haven't broken a thousand yards. Uh, so you, by that, you're just seeing a very high correlation of players that succeed in reception perception are putting up thousand yard seasons. All right. Thank you for your question. Uh, let's go to, we got Ramon. Ramon. I hope I said your name right. I I really do. I really hope I said that right. What are your thoughts on Melvin Gordon this season on the Broncos? <laughs> uh, all right. Look, I laugh because I am I'm the resident Melvin Gordon doubter uh, on the fantasy footballers. You could see it in my rankings. I have him much lower than everybody. I think I'm much lower on Melvin Gordon than the consensus. It's not that I don't see what Melvin Gordon could be. You know, the, I think the Broncos offensive line is, is pretty solid. Drew Locke game manager, game manager surrounded by talent. Do we get a more high powered offense from Denver this year? But look, I don't, I don't know that he's that good, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I, I, I genuinely feel bad when I have to when I give takes about I don't like a player. Uh, it it feels bad in my heart, but I like other. So <laughs> look, I like other guys way more than Melvin Gordon. Here's and Philip Lindsay is there. Back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushing seasons for Phil Lindsay. Incredibly efficient. Lindsay's still there on the team this year. It, Yes, Melvin Gordon did get the money. The money is not overwhelming for a veteran contract. He uh, he went to the, to the Broncos to spite the Los Angeles Chargers. That's a weird move, in my opinion. 
Uh, I think Melvin Gordon was a little bit upset. He didn't take the offer the Chargers gave him and had to settle for this two-year deal with the Broncos. I just, uh, I don't know. I don't know about Melvin Gordon. I don't like his average draft position. I'm not in on it. Uh, that's why I'm crushing those early round running backs so I don't have to go into the third and fourth round going, ooh, Melvin Gordon, David Johnson, Todd Gurley. Those guys could be good. They were good at one point, right? Weren't they? Weren't, weren't they? And then my voice just keeps getting higher and higher until I'm surrounded by only dogs that can hear me. And, and I'm sad. Well, I'm not sad because I'm actually I'm happy because the dogs are here. And that is just an absolute delight to be surrounded by my, uh, by my canine friends. But I'm sad that I had to draft one of those running backs. I hope my message is making it through the camera. Oh, my goodness. What a weird world we live in. Uh, UltimateDraftKit.com. Use that code WARLOCK. <laughs> like a weatherman here use that code war code warlock you're gonna save 10 percent if you've been slacking look i get it i get it we were all concerned about football but you know what's happening football and so facto fantasy football is happening you better be ready grab the ultimate draft kit it's the only kit that you need look you got some time you got some toilet time and the ultimate draft kit app is the absolute best way to spend that toilet time that's that's what i'm gonna say All right, all right. See some some of the the chat people getting hyped for Hayden Hurst. Let's see. Ooh, Tyler, I like where your brain's at, my friend. What's better for the ballers watching on YouTube or listening on the pod? Honestly, however you want to do it, my man. However you want to take in the show. Do you like Do you like to watch the show? Then go to YouTube. You like to listen? Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you wherever you get your podcast, man. It's all good. It's all good. But I, I do appreciate that your uh your willingness to, you know, go the extra mile and, and help support the show. I, I feel that. I feel that in my heart. And you're making a you're making my um my heart was the it grew two times the size. Is that what happened to the Grinch? Something like that. Something like that. All right. <laughs> I need to bail out on that joke. It was not going anywhere. James DJ Chark. Robert Woods, half point PPR. All right. This one is rough. Um, I think I have Robert Woods one spot ahead of my rankings. This one I'm actually going to check. Uh, let me go to my wide receiver rankings. I have, I have Robert Woods at 10. I have DJ Chark at 11. And the Jason said YouTube is the answer. <laughs> Jason likes those YouTube. Look, I won't lie to you. I like plaques. I like trophies. I didn't succeed as a child. I didn't play sports. I didn't win at athletic contests or contests that gave me trophies. So now I win. I when I can win a trophy, when I can get anything, it brings me joy to the point of weeping. We have our. Uh, silver YouTube placard. If we could somehow get that freaking gold YouTube 1 million subs, that would be an unbelievable moment. Uh, not just for for us, but I mean for everyone who listens to the show, for fantasy football as a whole, for, for a fantasy football only channel to hit a million subs on YouTube would be just That'd be freaking insane, man. Absolutely insane. And it's youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. I should probably know that. Uh, <laughs> it's, look, uh, you, you can find us. You can find us. Anyways, DJ Chark, Robert Woods, half point PPR. So my answer is Robert Woods. But my real answer is why not both? Why not both? Those are like my top two targets at the wide receiver position because I'm going running back, running back at the beginning. And I do that because I know in the third and the fourth round, like maybe, maybe someone falls in the third round, you know, in, oh, I don't know. D, somehow, somehow DJ Moore is there in the early third or Mike Evans. You're maybe you're in a weird draft and they don't like one of those players. But generally speaking, Robert Woods, DJ Shark, 
they are available in the third and the fourth rounds. And that's actually, I think, early for Chark. I think Chark is a ADP fifth round guy, but I'm willing to take him in the fourth because I have both of those guys ranked as wide receiver ones. Now, your ceiling for those players, I will say, I don't see Woods or Chark hitting top five. I'm not... I don't. That's not really in the range of outcomes for those guys um, that I that I'm projecting. I guess Chark. It is. It is certainly possible. Minshew catches fire. Chark hits twelve to thirteen touchdowns and eleven 1, hundred yards, and then he does. He he makes it in the top five. But the I, I don't think they will. However, they're going to be safe. You got Mister Reliable Robert Woods is so undervalued every single year. So my my answer, Woods, real answer, why not both? All right, let's talk quarterback here. We got JT over on the YouTube. He figured out how to find us on YouTube. Good work, JT. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, Tom Brady or Drew Brees? Okay. Uh, my rankings are easily Drew Brees. I have Drew at seven right now. I have Tom Brady at 14. I don't know what to do with Tom Brady. He is a very difficult player to project because this is... I mean, I well, we saw Jameis Winston have 5,030 for this team. I, I totally get that. Tom Brady is not the type of player that Jameis Winston is. But, I mean, legendary quarterback, changing system, changing offenses, surrounded by elite talent, but we haven't seen Brady really crushing it for fantasy in quite some time. Meanwhile, Drew Brees is coming fresh. Like, this is this is bread right out of the oven. You're just, mm, you remember that scent? It is just tingling the nostrils. Fresh off with that second half where Drew Brees was basically a league-winning quarterback. If you waited, maybe even you picked him up off of the waiver wire. Uh, so I have Drew Brees higher. And like I said, I'm not – I feel like I need some Pepto-Bismol for my ranking of Tom Brady. It's giving me the old the old bubble guts. Everything's a little gleepy and gloopy down there because I'm not sure which way it's going to go for Tom Brady. Uh I don't think he's going to be 14, and that's where my projections are. But he's that player where he's probably finishing much higher than that or lower than that. Like, we'll see. We'll see. Probably it's probably higher than that. I mean, you who's betting against who's betting against uh, Tom Brady? All right. Uh, let's see. Rob picked up Blake Jarwin off the waiver wire. In his dynasty league, my man coming through. Look, it's Jarwin season. It is Jarwin season. Get ready for it. Uh, the magic quiche, quiche. I hope that's what that says. Is I don't know. Kench, Ken. Ah, whatever. It's really small on my screen. <laughs> uh, the my guy episode is coming. I believe next week it might be this week i don't know this is really a brooks question so i don't know why you're asking me it's kind of rude and kind of mean to be asking me this like i should know my upcoming schedule of podcast releases but it's coming up very soon uh so stand by all right oh goodness gracious all right jacob that's not jacob oh well guess guess what danny your your question is up here, but I can't see. It. Okay, who should I keep as a keeper? Kenyon Drake or DeAndre Hopkins? <laughs> I'm sorry, whoever's question almost got answered. Uh, full PPR, half point per rush. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. I see what's going on. Okay. <clears throat> full PPR, half point per rush. Kenyon Drake, my man. How? Whoa, whoa, yeah. Kenyon Drake, absolutely. Look, Drake should be carrying the ball 220 plus times. Drake should get 60 receptions. Oh, Owl Borland has let me know that my guys is this Thursday. This 
Thursday, we will be talking about my guys. Like I got, I got, I got two of them locked in. It's tougher. This is a tougher year to lock in the my guys. I want to, you know, you want to write, you want to hit. It's hard. It's hard to hit on my guys. Um, <clears throat> Kenyon Drake. I mean that it. Like I said, oh, it's 220 carries. Got to get my rhythm back. 220 carries, 60 plus receptions. Kenyon Drake in this format is it's an absolute home run. Let's see. Oh, oh. <laughs> I am struggling on clicking the right question. But now, guess what? Kyle, you benefited on my swing and a miss. While the questions go, um, but anyways, let's see. Uh oh, we've got infighting. Jason says, "Pretty sure we moved that a week." Okay, look, my guys is maybe this Thursday, maybe it's next week. I don't know. You know what you'll have to do? Listen to the podcast or watch on YouTube. Okay, Kyle Singletary or D Johnson full PPR. D Johnson, huh? That's uh, that's David Duke D and D Houston Factory. I don't know what I don't know which one you mean, man. Why <laughs> why are you saving characters? D dot like U U K E two. You save two characters if it was Duke. You st- <laughs> what are you doing? You're killing me, man. All right, what look, I'll answer your question either way. Okay. Cause I like you, Kyle, and you're no avatar. Uh, if it's David Johnson versus Singletary, it's David Johnson in a full point PPR. If it's Duke Johnson versus Devin Singletary, then it's Devin Singletary. Oh man. Now Owl Borland is, is letting letting Jason know that he's dumb and he's calling him Brooks for reinforcement to figure out when the My Guys episode really is. Let's find out if Brooks actually shows up. All right. Uh, Oh, John, with unkind words for me. (laughs) Sorry, John, I don't know what I did to you, my friend. Okay, I like this question. Joey. Oh, my goodness, Jason says Deontay Johnson is out there too. Oh, man ridiculous ridiculousness all right anyways joey says <laughs> i like that so much <laughs> uh how high should we draft herndon if you are gonna draft chris herndon if you're gonna draft blake jarwin you're punting the position i really like both of these players Ooh, imagine two my guys blake jarwin chris herndon that would be a fire episode huh um but you're with your, I don't know, third to last pick, second to last pick, last pick. Who, I mean, who cares? You're not, no one's taking Chris Herndon away from you. The, the general home leagues, the, the only people on Chris Herndon are like degenerates who want to feel the pain that Chris Herndon can bring them yet again. Oh my goodness. Let me, so let me see. So I have Chris Herndon at tight end 19. That's pretty low. I guess that's pretty low. And if you want to check out all the rankings, all the projections, you know, grab the ultimate draft kit. Hold on. Hold. There we go. The code is Warlock. (laughs) This is tough. Uh, If you've been slacking and you don't have your UDK yet, ultimatedraftkit.com. Make sure you use the code Warlock. All of our projections all of our player profile videos, the reception perception, everything uh, everything that you could want to get ready for the draft. And, oh, um, this is an excellent reminder here from Owl Borland. This code is for the live stream only. So limited time offer, people. You want to save 10%? You want to save some of that quiche? You better go and you better get it done. Uh, if I were you, I'd probably get the, uh, the, uh, the DFS combo as well get that 10 percent because you know 10 percent. then it stretches it a little bit that's what i would do if i were you okay uh david i'm not going to put your question up i just missed it david asked 
is the Megla Bowl happening this week, this year? I may have just given something away. <laughs> My bad. Uh, yeah, you should probably listen to the show tomorrow. Don't miss it. All right. Goodness, man, this is this is rough over here with these questions. All right, Jake. Is it bad if I took DJ Moore as my wide receiver one over guys like Kenny Galladay, Cooper, Brown, Thielen? No, it's, that, is, that is not bad at all. I love DJ Moore. He was the wide receiver 10, I believe, before he went down to his concussion. And I mean, I like Kenny Galladay a lot. Cooper, Brown, and Thielen, I'm not, I don't know if I'm drafting them fully as ones. And my rankings say that not really. DJ Moore is a wide receiver one to me, though. I mean, he did what he did with Kyle Allen. Kyle Allen, if you watched, not good at football. If you are a box score hound, if you are a stat junkie, Kyle Allen, not good at football. Teddy Bridgewater, good at football. He is a good quarterback. So, like, I, this is an upgrade situation for me. I like DJ Moore. I like DJ Moore. And I'm fine taking him over these types of wide receivers. Let's find another question. Oh, Ben drafted Herndon. I like it, Ben. I like it. Good for you. More my guys questions. Let's see. How early should I draft DJ Moore? Uh, you know, second round. Second round. I'm trying to find a question I could put up on the screen. Come on, man. Anyways, while I do this, you guys should probably be, you guys and gals, I apologize, should be checking out uh, getting your ultimate draft kit, man. Save 10% right now. Live stream exclusive, 10% warlock. Save some money. Get the ultimate draft kit. You're going to get it. Be honest with yourself. You're going to get it. It's great. People win when they get the ultimate draft kit. Okay. <laughs> I sound like a turd right now. All right. Uh, oh my gosh! Stop moving. He let's see, Colby. He's not even reading the chat. Says Colby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I publicly shame you, Colby. I am reading the chat. It's just very difficult to read the chat sometimes. Goodness. Take that, Colby. Richard, that is your real name. Oh, excellent question here. Excellent question. We've been talking about fantasy football for far too long. Lion King or Toy Story? I don't think I've ever thought about this this way. And Andy, no, to answer your question, I the scrolling is like never stopping ever. So this is insanity what I'm dealing with. Uh, but the Lion King or Toy Story, this is a very strange question i've never thought about this because it's you're just disney versus pixar you're crossing the streams and ghostbusters taught us that that's not to be done but lion king or toy story i think i'm gonna take toy story i'm gonna take toy story man and it over the years i think the they have the benefit of the sequels so like it's grown you know the the nostalgia has grown deeper and deeper I didn't I hated that song, the the you got a friend in me. I didn't like that song when I was young. And now I hear it and I go, oh man, that takes me back. That takes me back to being a young kid and not liking that song. But now I like it. So that's that's where we, we're going. All right. Uh Lachlan. Hope I got your name right there, bud. I apologize. <clears throat> How high are you on Terry McLaurin? Uh, the answer, how high am I in Terry McLaurin, is sky high. I very much believe in the player of Terry McLaurin. I know that he's got a Dwayne Haskins issue that uh, it probably sounds like I overlook a little bit when I'm talking about uh, Terry McLaurin. But I, leave, I believe in the player so very much. This and... Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'll do the comp anyways. I believed in Allen Robinson as a rookie. Allen Robinson had a Blake Bortles problem. 
a very bad one. His second year in the season in the in the league, he went fourteen hundred in fourteen with Blake Bortles. Alan Hearns also balled out with Blake Bortles. Quarterbacks can get better. Even if it's a bad quarterback, they can just put up a good year. I think Dwayne Haskins can get better. He showed he was getting better towards the end of the season. McLaurin averaged about the same amount of yards with and without Dwayne Haskins as his starting quarterback. He's Terry McLaurin's really good. He has all the tools. He's a, you know, he's going to be a he'll be an elite route runner by the end of this season. He has the physical attributes to just overpower you and be faster than you. And then when you add in route running and all the nuances of playing the position, I am I am all in on Terry McLaurin. So I hope that answers your question. Sky high, baby. Sky high. All right. Miguel wants to know Gallup or Lamb. Now, I if this is a redraft question, this question is very, very easy for me. It's Michael Gallup. Michael Gallup was an 1,100-yard receiver. He was pacing with Amari Cooper, the $100 million man. <laughs> I look, the wink is not imaginary money, though the wink is he's worth a hundred million dollars. Look, Jerry Jerry Jones gets things wrong. Wrongs? He gets things wrong sometimes. Uh Michael Gallup, excellent at football. I really like C Lamb. I like the landing spot. I'm not as I wasn't as devastated as people were on draft night when it was oh CeeDee Lamb's my number one guy. My number one guy. And he went to a team that has two good wide receivers already. Look, CeeDee Lamb's going to carve out his role in this offense. This year, it's Michael Gallup. And CeeDee Lamb's going to emerge. He's going to emerge. So, uh, not this year. I'm not drafting CeeDee Lamb anywhere. Dynasty. Dynasty, of course, I'm drafting CeeDee Lamb. But redraft, I am I am not picking up CeeDee Lamb really anywhere. I don't think I've drafted him one time. There's there's so many rookies like like Brandon Ayuk and Ayuk and who started to get some press this week from his head coach. I mean, there's just if you want a rookie wide receiver, there's other players that you can go with. So, Ceedee Lamb, I'm not in on that one. Uh, bup, bup, bup. Let's see. Not the question I thought I clicked on, but. Let's let's find out what happens. Uh, this is from Kung, who says, "If I went RBRB, how would you feel about Ridley and Robert Woods as my two wide receivers?" The answer is spectacular because your two running backs are going to dominate. You're taking them early, uh, high probability of hitting, lower probability of busting, and then Ridley and Robert Woods. That is that is absolutely excellent. So I'm all, all in on that. Uh, Robert Woods, I have him as a wide receiver one. Calvin Ridley, I just talked about him earlier in the stream. That top 10 is in the range of outcomes. Like I said, for the for the people, if you're just joining the stream, look, if you've been slacking on the Ultimate Draft Kit, it is available right now, ultimatedraftkit.com. Use the promo code WARLOCK. It's in the top right somewhere where you're checking out. Uh, you're going to save 10%. I really advise grabbing the combo so that you're ready to take down some some DFS as well. But the ultimate draft kit with the reception perception on Calvin Ridley, the guy is just, he is a ticking time bomb to go off for the NFL and to go off for fantasy football. The, like We always, we forget Calvin Ridley was a first round pick because it seemed at the time not that it was a bad – we knew he was going to be a first-round pick, but him going to Atlanta, it felt bad. It felt it felt bad. I, in my rookie draft, I don't even remember where Calvin Ridley slipped in our first round. He fell way too far because people didn't want to wait for him. And if you would have grabbed him now, you're very, very happy about that. And which, speaking of, you know, uh, we do have rookie rankings. If you If you haven't done your dynasty rookie draft yet, we have those available in the Ultimate Draft Kit as well. Tons of other amazing things. Like you can spend the entire month of August going through the draft kit and getting ready for your drafts. Our sleepers, 
I know we just did a revamp on our uh, sleepers, breakouts, bust values. Kind of like that's the section of the draft that I love, where we you know we highlight the players, we highlight who we are targeting, we highlight who we're staying away from, and we make sure we're keeping that entire section updated as ADP is changing, as people are drafting, people are moving up, people are moving down in the draft. Uh, so look, highly encourage it. If you want to grab it, ultimatedraftkit.com. Use that promo code WARLOCK. Let's see. All right, here we go. <laughs> Andrew says, <laughs> oh, I wish, I wish you could, you all could see what I think I'm clicking on. And then the question that comes up because it's, it never happens. Uh, Andrew says, if Thomas falls to me at seven in the first round, do I take him or do I take a running back that I want to? Oof, that, <clears throat> that is a tough one at seven. Okay. Let me look at my running back rankings. So let's, I'm going to walk you through them. And again, all rankings are in the ultimate draft kit, but so CMC, Saquon, Zeke, that's my easy top three picks. Then I have them ranked Dalvin, Clyde, Kamara. I'm not going to get in a fist fight with anybody over, you want to take Kamara number four, you want to take Clyde number four. That's fine. I was looking for my mute button. I couldn't find it. Um, so the, the, that's my first six picks. Then it gets a little bit sketchier for me. Derrick Henry, Jacobs, Aaron Jones, who's... Oh man, Aaron Jones is hanging on by a thread to my top 10. Dem AJ villain quads though and calves. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to let a, a, a man's physique move Aaron Jones out of my top 10. But if any man's physique could do it, <laughs> it's AJ Dillon. Holy crap, have you seen his calves? Here's his calves. This big. Um, anyway, so back to the question at hand. I apologize. I got off of topics there. Michael Thomas at seven. So Derrick Henry, Jacobs. I feel confident in those two guys. So honestly, for me personally, I'm going running back through eight. I'm taking Derrick Henry. I'm taking Josh Jacobs. And then I would take Thomas over the next batch of running backs. I believe. I believe. That's, I mean, I'm not in a draft right now. I don't have my emotions. I don't have pizza and wings. I don't have, you know, other things influencing how uh, how I'm handling my draft at the moment. But I think that's the way that it would go for me. Unless it's a three wide receiver full PPR, then at, at which point then Michael Thomas would be my pick number seven. Going on to the next question. They're going up so fast it's hard for me to pick. I like this one. Artem. Artem. Show. We got it. We got it. All right. Daniel Jones or Kirk Cousins? Man. That is tough, but I'm taking... It's tough because Daniel Jones' opening schedule is a lot like the weather in Arizona right now in which that it is uh, insufferable. It's intolerable. It's not for human consumption. It's really bad. And I like Daniel Jones to break out. I've talked about it a lot on the show. Uh, the, num the kind of numbers that Daniel Jones was able to put up in his limited amount of work as a rookie. But those first few matchups, man, they are rough. They are really, really rough for Daniel Jones. So long term, I think for the season, I want Daniel Jones, but I think I might start out with Kirk Cousins because I can't remember who they play week one, but it's it's really, really rough. So uh, we're going to close down here pretty soon. I, I think I'll take a couple more questions, but do want to remind you that the code Warlock, Warlock, <laughs> The code WARLOCK is for the live stream only. So 
Take advantage of it while you can. It's a ten look, it's ten percent off. All you had to do was show up to a live stream, man, and you're gonna get uh the ultimate draft kit, which we keep updating. We will continue updating up through the kickoff of the NFL. Make sure everyone's getting the most up to date information for their drafts possible. Uh try not to let AJ Dillon pictures infiltrate my brain a little bit too much, which they they may or they may not. Uh, but anyways, you can use the code uh, Warlock here to save 10%. <laughs> Andy is making fun of me. Okay, uh, a couple more questions, and then I got to go <laughs> watch a... Uh, I'm going to go watch a movie with, with my kiddos. With my kiddos. All right. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Let's see. Uh, stop moving. Okay, here we go. Raymond, if you have to pick Cam Akers or Keyshawn Vaughn. All right. So this is an interesting question just because of like the surface level. This is, oh, well, I would take Cam Akers. He was a second round pick by the Rams. Todd Gurley is gone. All the opportunity, yada, yada. If Keyshawn Vaughn hits... I think his, I think his, I don't, I'm trying not to be a hot take guy right now, but I think his ceiling is higher than Cam Akers. But probability of Cam Akers, or of who's going to hit their ceiling, I would lean that to Cam Akers. Like the ceiling for Keyshawn Vaughn is he is the three down running back for Bruce Arians' system and Tom Brady as his quarterback. So I hope that, that that's what I mean by ceiling. Like, you're talking 60 plus receptions. You're talking a ton of carries, a lot of scoring opportunities. But right now, Vaughn is buried. So, uh, Ronald Jones, I don't, I don't know what to make of Ronald Jones other than that he looks like a draft day value right now and should be starting. But it's, so, if I have to pick between the two, I'm going to take Cam Akers, but I'm not throwing Keyshawn Vaughn away, which seems to have kind of happened. Uh, like Keyshawn Vaughn was the hotness coming out of the rookie or uh, the NFL draft and people getting ready for rookie drafts. And then it, he seems to have been kind of thrown into the garbage a little bit. And I don't think that he should do that at all. Let's see here. All right. I'm going to get out of here. One more question. And again, or two more questions. Cause I like this one from Jake favorite Christopher Nolan movie. The hell's not the Dark Knight, man? I mean, that movie is absolutely sensational with uh, Heath Ledger, my man, RIP, holding it down with an unbelievable performance. And it's just overall, it's an incredible movie. But, I mean, shout out to Interstellar, which I've only seen twice now. Saw it in the movie theater. I loved it. And I went years and years and years and didn't watch it. I sat down. It was just me. Uh, I sat downstairs when everyone went to bed. I watched it, and holy crap, I cried like a freaking baby, man! It was uh, unbelievable. The uh, the uh, McConaughey, our dude, great friend of the show, Matthew McConaughey, uh, that scene where he's watching his daughter grow up and get angry at him. Oh my, whew, just rip my heart and stomp upon it, my friends. Oh, that was rough. That was rough. All right, we'll do uh we'll do a fancy question though, not just talk about Christopher Nolan movies, which honestly I probably could a lot. All right, I like this question. Nick says Jared Kuk or Mike Gasicki. <clears throat> now I know Mike Gasicki is getting uh he's getting uh beat up a little bit, maybe rightfully so. I don't know, on Twitter for a dude who broke the combine along with his Penn State teammate, Saquon Barkley. I mean, if you're not aware of what Gasicki was able to do with his athletic profile, you should check it out. It's a sight to behold. But the dude it's not translating on the field. He doesn't break tackles. No yards after catch. It's basically catch and fall down, catch and get tackled. But... Uh, so uh, tomorrow is our tight end show. We're gonna, you know, go one through ten, break down some other tight ends. I'm out. I'm out on Jared Cook. 
I am absolutely out. I'm going to break down all the reasons on tomorrow's podcast. Make sure you check that out. You know, sub- watch on YouTube, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, wherever it is. Wh- wherever it is, just make sure you subscribe so you can see it right away. But I'm going to break everything down. I am out on Jared Cook. Meanwhile, the other two ruffians on the Fantasy Footballers podcast are going to try and convince me that that I should be drafting Jared Cook, and and I am absolutely not doing that. UltimateDraftKit.com. It's going to stay updated. Sleepers, breakouts, values, busts, full projections, reception perception, video profiles. There is so freaking much. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. And you can save 10% off with our live stream coupon right now. Make sure you get in before we got to disable that bad boy. Warlock. Warlock is the code. I got it that time. Uh, thank you for joining me for the live stream. Once again, the Fantasy Footballers, we are five days a week. So we will be joining you at the gym. We'll be joining you for as you go to sleep. Maybe maybe you're working. Maybe you still have a commute. Some I mean, The commutes are kind of weird these days. But anyways, thank you so, so much for supporting the show. Thank you so much for supporting the draft kit. You all are the reason we are able to do that. So thank you so much. We will see you tomorrow. And just remember, we're all out on Jared Cook together.